Welcome back, folks. This is April 2017's content for the ICT Mentorship. This month, we're going to be teaching my day trading model. This is lesson one, and we're going to be covering essentials to ICT day trading. All right, folks, uh, ICT day trading model and the essentials to the ICT day trading. Okay, for the opportunities inside the daily range. Now the aim is to capitalize on the movement existing in a single day. Now this makes this type of trading the hardest, and it's why most analysts and technical uh, gurus, if you will, that uh, like to talk on CNBC or in the higher time frame world, uh, they'll they'll scoff at day trading. They'll say that it's not likely that anyone could be profitable trading this time frame. But as you'll learn in this month, it's very very precise. And our aim is to capitalize on the movement that exists in a 24-hour trading period. It's important just because the name, again, I've said this many times, uh, is day trading. It does not mean or equate to everyday trading. So not all dates are going to be ideal for day trading. Generally, there are two setups per trading day on average. And we're going to go over both of those uh, setups uh, but we're going to be talking about other scenarios that can take place in a 24-hour trading period for this month that will also help you when we get into scalping in the May content. The daily range is the goal for us as the day trader. In other words, our expectation is to capitalize on at least 65 to 70% of the daily range. That means we're going to leave a little bit on the table, possibly near the high or the low of the day. But we're trying to get the lion's portion of the move that comprises the daily range or daily candle. Now, typically, the daily range will be close to the last five days average daily range. And I'll go into detail about that and how we can arrive at that figure. But generally, what we're looking for is a range that is equivalent to the last five days averaged across. In other words, what's the most pips it's moved in the last five days averaged and then that's going to be our expected daily range. Now, there's going to be times where I'm going to teach you uh, where average daily range can be actually doubled or even expected to be more than doubled in a single day. Directional bias frames a large portion of all day trade setups. That means we're going to be looking for directional plays primarily. So we're going to have a preconceived idea going into the week, we're looking for specific criteria to link ourselves with institutional order flow. Now the ideal scenario is to day trade in the direction of the weekly time frame. I'm going to give you insights in this specific teaching here how we can do that. Now the more higher time frame ideas that you can find to support the day trade, this is going to increase the odds and therefore make it better for you. Now, day trades permit the trader to limit the stop loss on all trades. Now, while we're dealing specifically with day trading in this entire month's content, the advantage is even if you do not want to be a day trader or you don't have the ability to sit in front of the charts all day long and babysit, uh, there's going to be a way of doing this type of trading without sitting in front of the charts all day. I'll give you that. But also, I want you to think about how using day trade entries and using the very small stop losses that this time frame permits in this discipline of trading, you can lower your initial risk when we are trading these long-term position trades or swing trades and or your one-shot, one-kill. So these setups, while they are really limited to you know, by your own imagination, you can't just look at this as a well it's a day trading model or discipline so therefore you know it doesn't fit me it doesn't, it doesn't fit my criteria or my personal makeup as a trader uh, it doesn't jive with my psyche as an individual so therefore let me just just discount this and maybe you're looking for something that's going to be taught later in the mentorship and you're not really going to pay too much attention to this one uh, you'd be really doing yourself a disservice because it helps you reduce the amount of risk lower the amount of pips and it's also going to have a framework where you can incorporate with the last lesson number eight of this month, we can incorporate the entry techniques that we're using for day trading and then overlap that with higher time frame setups, which can give you many, many times over the standard three to five to one setups. In other words, we're looking for setups that pay out five to one or three to one ideally, but 
when you're using day trade entries and you're high, trading off a higher time frame setup, wow, the multiples can be ridiculous. They could be in the double digits very easily. It's important not to take many day trades in a single 24-hour day. And as I mentioned earlier, there's two primary setups in a day. And we're going to go over that in the next teaching. But for now, just understand that just because you're day trading and we're not talking about scalping here, but we're looking for specific setups that allow us to try to capitalize on the majority of the daily range. Now, it's not important that we get all of the daily range. Believe me, if you get a portion of the daily range and you go on profit, that's way better than 99% of all the other traders out there because most people are losing money. So if you're capitalizing on the daily range and you're getting some portion of it every single day, that may equate to maybe 30 pips. And maybe the average daily range is 120 pips. And the daily range for that particular day you traded was 100 pips, but you only got 30 or maybe 40. That's not a loss. That's not a missed opportunity. That's actually very successful. So you're, you're doing well. And if, if you can continuously do that, you'll grow in your understanding and bring yourself to holding for larger portions of the move and getting in better entries. And you'll get larger portions of that daily range. But don't think that you're going to day trade a lot and therefore get a lot of trades. Okay. That's not the answer to what you're looking for in terms of profitability or pips. Now, the up-to-data ranges combined with PD arrays are the foundation to all of my day trades. FOMC days and non-farm payroll days keep us on the sidelines, and they are basically a no-setup day. So while we can play in the sand and use our demo accounts to keep close to price and stay dialed in in terms of what they may be reaching for, uh, as we just did just this past uh, Friday, uh, the week of this recording, uh, just because we may be able to forecast or see analytically where IPTA may take price, it's many times better just to sit on the sidelines and just let that one day go by without you. Participation in those types of days really does not increase your odds, even in day trading. All right, so what frames the daily setups? Obviously, we have to concern ourselves with higher time frame institutional order flow, and that's going to be arrived at looking at monthly, weekly, and daily PD arrays in the last 20, 40, and 60 trading days. I'm going to assume that you have a firm understanding about what a PD array is, and looking back the last 20, 40, and 60 trading days, you have to look for those higher time frame, and we're going to focus primarily on the daily. Uh, for day trades, uh, you don't need to see anything in terms of a weekly or a monthly primarily because uh, you'll generally see something on the daily that will line up for a discount or a premium PD array. Now, IPTA will be seeking new levels in price for liquidity. That's the role of the interbank price delivery algorithm. It seeks to move price to an area of new liquidity. The weekly chart or current candles direction is what we're primarily working within. So what we're doing is, is we're blending our expectation of what IPTA may be seeking in terms of new liquidity above or below us in terms of market price. And we're forecasting the weekly candle direction that we're presently trading in. So in other words, if we're getting ready to go into a new week, we're going to be forecasting what IPTA will be reaching for, higher or lower prices in relative terms to the PD arrays and in the IPTA data ranges. In other words, how far back are we looking for the most obvious, logical, premium or discount array? And what's the direction that's most likely favoring higher or lower prices? And then we incorporate that idea in forecasting the, the present or next weekly candle. And we look for that expansion, higher or lower, in relative terms to what we expect in terms of the, the data range and institutional order flow. The day of the week is paramount in understanding about day trading because there's certain days that have high probability. And there's other days that can be a little bit of a hat trick. In other words, you may expect something to happen this particular day, but it may do something entirely different. And then there's other days that are predisposed to really just be a quiet day. And we'll talk about that. And the most important is time of day. Time of day for day trading is absolutely paramount. Just because we are day trading 
doesn't mean that you can just sit down any old time and say, okay, I'm going to buy the euro here and therefore I'm going to be profitable or I'm going to sell short the euro yen because, you know, I got off work and I can sit in front of charts now. It does not equate to that. There are specific times of the day that IPTA will move price and gyrate price around and then the market makers will facilitate trade at those particular times. Now, there are no set brokerage operating hours, but there are time windows that we have to work within. So while I don't trade in zones in price, I do trade in zones in time. So you have to be flexible with time and demand specifics in price. That means we're demanding specific things that occur in a window of time. So the flexibility resides in time, not price. Price must hit our level, must go to our level, and we look for price to reach for that contrary and PD array for our profit. We do not wait for price to get exactly to that level because we're always going to look to exit early, but we're always looking for these exits and entries to overlap with specific times of the day. And what we're primarily focusing on are volatility expansions or large daily ranges. Okay, time of day. What time of day are we referring to? Obviously, if you've gone through all my pre tutorials, these times of the day aren't going to be new to you, but for completeness sake, I do have to incorporate them. Primarily, we're going to be looking for day trades at the London session open, and that is basically the ICT kill zone for London. And we're going to be talking in terms of New York time. So when I refer to a time here, it's going to be relative to what time it is in New York. So typically London, the hot spot for the higher low to form of the day is usually between 2 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning New York time. Now it can deviate and, and transition a little bit earlier, a little bit later relative to the economic calendar and or daylight savings time. It has a little bit of an overlap where there may be some transition time before the market observes any movement from a daylight savings time or not in daylight savings time. Uh, the way I um, overcome that is I look at my London open kill zone beginning at 1 a.m. New York time and ending at 5 a.m. New York time. So it gives me that window of four hours where it allows literally nothing to escape me. I'm looking already at that time window and I'm looking at the economic calendar relative to the pair I'm trading. So there should be some kind of manipulation just before or at the time of the news release. That either is medium impact or high impact, and then therefore the trade setup is seen. The next time window we look at is the New York session open. Now this is primarily the easiest one to work with. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna see that with the insights that you're gonna learn in this particular uh, teaching, you'll know why that the New York session really really is so much easier, and that's why I worked primarily the majority of our mentorship thus far in the New York session. Because I want you to get really friendly with that time frame. Uh, you know, London can be a little bit of a beast, so you have to know a little bit more understanding about IPTA, how the daily ranges form within the weekly range, and then the weekly range forms within a monthly range. So all of these fractal ideas, they have to be utilized in modular fashion, and over a period of time, you'll get a better understanding about how the sessions unfold and when London is to be avoided, which we'll talk about this month, but... New York primarily is really, really good. Now, the only time that you would avoid New York is if the London session puts in 80% of the average daily range. And there's going to be very few times that it does that. But generally, unless the daily range is almost entirely completed in the last five days, average daily range is what I'm referring to. Uh, that measurement, if it's met or exceeded in London, that is when you want to move to the sidelines and don't even consider trading New York because it's probably either going to bounce around, go sideways, or it may catch you in a reversal that you weren't expecting. And it's just better just to just sit on the sidelines and don't worry about it. Wait for another trading day. London close. Now, I've taught uh, London close day trading strategy in the past. Uh, I used to do it. I lost interest in it because it just doesn't give me enough of a uh, payment, if you will. Uh, I'll touch briefly on it this month, but obviously I have my own teaching on it where you can watch that in my free tutorials. But nonetheless, uh, London Close is the time of day where we look to really bank our positions. And there are times when if the market is in a reversal uh, intraday 
hey, but it goes down into a logical level of support or trades up into a logical level of resistance. Uh, that may be the very moment in time that a reversal uh, occurs. London close is not always just simply close uh, existing trades and move to the sidelines. Many times London close can be incorporated as a entry point for longer term one shot one kill or swing or position trades. All right, the New York close is basically just a time window. What we're looking for is uh, the two o'clock hour. Now, I'm not going to uh, argue that everyone else around the world is going to say New York is you know later in the day than that. Uh, I'll leave everyone else to believe whatever they want to believe. But what we're looking at is the two o'clock hour and specifically the three o'clock. Uh, which is the close of the bond market. That, to me, is the close of the New York session. So what we look for is in days to have FOMC, interest rate stuff that comes out at 2 o'clock hour New York time. Uh, that usually will run till around 3 o'clock in the afternoon New York time. And then when the bond market closes at 3 p.m., that's it. Whatever's happened by then, that's the daily range, and there's nothing else to expect. Very, very rarely are we even concerned about that because generally by noon, uh, you're you're done. You're not really look, looking at anything past noon. Asian session open. Uh, this is primarily 8 p.m. Uh, my time in New York. Uh, we're looking for very small little setups that takes place in uh, this time of day. But many times uh, during the Aussie overlap into Asia, uh, you can actually get the daily low or high formed uh, in the Asian session open for like the yen pairs. Uh, Aussie and uh, Kiwi, those types of uh, pairs can generally surprise a trader by forming a uh, special or important, if you will, higher low at that time of day. When you would normally expect it in the London session, uh, those pairs generally can have a surprise and form their particular daily low and respective low at that session time. And London lunch. This is generally between 5 a.m to 7 a.m. Uh, that time window is when the market goes pretty much quiet uh, and it prepares for the next leg, either in the direction that London call, uh, creates or a reversal. And on days that don't promote any more follow through, it can just be a continuation rate from London and goes right on through the New York session and consolidation. So London after 5 a.m. New York time, you generally want to just anticipate a mode of transition, retracement, or consolidation. So if we're, for instance, if we're looking for lower prices and we've gone short in London, uh, it's a pretty good idea to take something at or just before 5 a.m., uh, just in case we get a reversal, uh, because there can be London lunch reversals, and because there's usually an economic report that comes out late, like 4.30 in the morning, my time, or it could be a 5 a.m. release economically, but nonetheless, uh, you, you want to take something during the London session in terms of profit because the London lunch hour can cause a reversal or um, a deeper retracement that may squeeze on your profits and depending upon how far that retracement goes, and some of them in London can be brutal. Uh, you don't want to get uh, the opportunity pass you by where a good position exit would have been uh, favorable for at least a portion of your trade. So be mindful that between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. that is considered the London lunch. And we look for either a retracement or consolidation on that particular time of day. Okay, day of week. I'm going to give you some characteristic specifics about uh, each day. And Sunday, generally we opt out because the daily range is simply too, too small. It's only a couple hours. But there are some things that we need to know about Sunday for those data providers that use daily uh, Sunday candles. Uh, some providers, some brokers don't use Sunday at all. Uh, but if it if your broker doesn't use Sunday, uh, don't worry about it. Just use everything that we teach, and I'll refer to later on when we get to that uh, discussion about what we do with Sunday. Uh, you just incorporate that with M Monday's data. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, Monday. Generally, this can create a small range, typically. Um, if it's a really large range and it comes right out the gate, uh, you know, direction-wise, and you understand where you're at in terms of the, the PD arrays, if we're trading up into a, a premium right from the uh, jump of the new week, 
and Monday becomes a high range or large range day and it trades into a premium PD array, that can many times be the high of the week. Uh, that's the characteristics that we look for. So that's kind of like a tip that we can add to back uh, the one shot, one kill content. If Monday is a big range day and we trade up into a premium relative to the daily, then we can really anticipate that being the high of the week. Now, generally, Mondays are going to be a small range day unless that type of scenario unfolds. Or the opposite would be if Monday has a big range day and trading down and it goes into a PD array that's a discount on the daily chart, then we can anticipate Monday becoming the low of the, low of the week. Tuesday usually is a good day to trade. Uh, in terms of specifics of one shot, one kill, usually on bullish weeks, uh, Tuesday has a 70% likelihood of creating the low of the week in London, and therefore it creates a high probability uh, scenario to be a day trader on Tuesdays. And the reverse is said for when the markets are bearish, you have a 70% likelihood that Tuesday's London open will create the high of the week. So generally, Tuesdays are really good days to trade for day trades. Wednesday are really ideal scenarios because what you'll see is you have Sunday if you use those candles in your platform, Monday and Tuesday, or if you don't have Sunday, you have Monday and Tuesday behind you, and it gives you some insight as we're going to share in this teaching to help frame confidence around trading Wednesday with a particular mindset going into London and New York. So generally, ideal day trading uh, is seen on Wednesday because you have some data midweek. Thursday, again, is a generally ideal scenario, but you got to be careful. Thursdays can reverse. Um, usually, the weekly range is, again, capped by Thursday's New York session. So be mindful that if we do get a good day trade in, in Thursday's London Open, it may fizzle out and actually reverse the week during the Thursday New York or London close scenario. Friday is typically a small range as we close a week, uh, but if there are objectives that haven't been met by Thursday in terms of the PD arrays, uh, you could see a surprise expansion on Friday running into that uh, PD array. So it's kind of like a toss up. It depends on what we've seen in the weekly range. If Thursday has met the daily PD array, whether it be a premium or discount that we've traded for in terms of a target uh, for the weekly range as a whole, if that's been met by Thursday, chances are Friday's going to be a really quiet day. Uh, if it has not been met, Friday can generally sometimes surprise us and have a big, large range day. The weekly range framework. Okay, what we look for is on Sunday, we determine the new trading week's opening price. Now, this will aid us in intra week with day trade directional bias to work with. Now, I already know some of you are thinking and panicking, oh no, you know, I don't use Sunday candles. My broker doesn't use Sunday data. No problem. Just use your opening on Monday. It's not that big of a deal. It's still going to come to the same consensus anyway. So just relax. It's not going to be that much of a disparity. But we're going to note this Sunday opening and we're going to note it and draw it out in time all the way through our 60 minute or one hour chart all the way up to Thursday. Now the weekly range framework, what we do with this is we take that opening range price from Sunday and we draw it out on our hourly chart and we draw it all the way until Thursday. Now, why is it Thursday? Well, because your profile say on Thursday, you could see a reversal unfold for the week. So while we do have some rules that we're going to be sharing with you here, Thursday may change that entirely. And it'll also frame a high probability reversal confirmation, if you will, if price gets back above and when it's bearish, like for instance, look at this chart here. If price were to trade back above the opening price on Sunday during Thursday's trading, we've probably turned the corner. We've had a major intra-week reversal, and that many times indicates a longer-term one-shot-one-kill bullish. So we could get in sync with that. If not on the next day in Friday, we can certainly be in sync with it the next trading week. So think about that in terms of intra-week reversals. Uh, if we see it trade back above, on this case, since it was bearish for the week, 
If we trade above Sunday's opening on Thursday, we've had an intraweek reversal. And obviously that goes without saying it's pretty obvious. And some of you that are very cynical would say, well, good grief, that's obvious, Michael. But think about what it's telling you. You've had a intermediate term reversal. So now, therefore, Friday may not give you a setup to trade long, but next week you can. You can trade long on Monday right out the gate looking for a low in New York and London to get long and, and take those positions throughout the rest of the next week. If this scenario was reversed and we had Sunday's opening uh, forecast all the way and drawn through our hourly chart all the way up to Thursday and it started bullish for the week and then traded down Thursday through that Sunday's opening price, that registers a potential weekly reversal. So therefore, we can get in sync the very next day on Friday selling short or the next week our scenario would go into that new week going short right from jump on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday looking for the high of the week to form and then therefore going short every day you know, the following week based on that insight. But the Sunday opening price filter, we look for price to trade above this level generally early in the week during bearish weekly directional bias. In other words, we're expecting price to trade down away from a PD array that's a premium. Okay, we've seen price move up into a premium. It's already traded. IPTA's already fulfilled a premium level. So therefore, we're expecting expansion on the downside. And we see the opening price. And then price starts to trade up Sunday and going into Monday. Trades above it. So therefore, we're seeing a little bit of a Judas swing. That's the criteria we're looking for. And then throughout the rest of the week, as long as price is lower than this Sunday opening price each day of the week, we look to sell short in all of our day trades. Caveat is, until a higher time frame PD array that's contrary to how our trade is unfolding is traded to. In other words, if we're looking for bearish ideas, okay, directional wise, we're expecting the weekly candle to be closing lower than it opened on Sunday. In other words, the weekly candle closing Friday will close lower than it opened on Sunday's opening, or if your data provider opens on Monday. If we're expecting that down candle on a weekly basis, as long as we are trading below the Sunday's opening price, we're looking to sell short every single day in London and continuation in New York. But this is only true in this case while we're looking for sell days every day of the week while we're below the Sunday opening price. That's true only until we trade to a higher time frame discount PD array. That has us on caution, and we may see an intraweek reversal if that happens. Otherwise, we continuously take day trades short in London and continuations in New York. Okay, continuing with the weekly range framework, the opposite is said here for Sunday's opening price filter. We look for price to trade below this level early in the week during bullish weekly directional bias. In other words, if price is trading at a higher time frame discount PD array, whether it be a monthly, weekly, and daily, there's suggestions that you know, the price is really oversold, institutionally speaking, not because of indicators. But in relative terms, if we expect something to, to be bullish on a daily chart, that's really the only thing we really need. Uh, if the daily is at a discount and we're trading at a discount PD array, prices suggesting higher prices, institutional order flow suggesting higher prices, we're going to forecast the weekly candle to close higher than it opens on Sunday. As long as price is higher than this Sunday opening price each day of the week, we look to buy long in all of our day trades. That means we're looking for the low to form in London and a continuation buy in New York. And we continuously hold this idea throughout the week until a higher time frame PD array in the form of a premium is traded to. Then we would expect a potential intraweek reversal. So I know it's just probably you know going way past your heads and it's going a lot of information because many of you probably shortchanged yourself studying the previous lessons. I'm going to give you a few examples, and we're going to look back at the cable over the last three weeks and give you some scenarios and what this did and how it helps. Okay, so we're looking at a British Pound USD weekly chart. So every range here represents a weekly amount of data. In other words, it's the open, high, low, and close of an entire week. I want you to focus primarily at this chart and think about Power 3. Now, you've gone through my free tutorials, you understand what Power 3 is, but 
I want you to look at these candles and remind yourself that the weekly range candles that are large have the opening price and closing price at opposing ends of the candlestick range. And this is important because it's teaching you to focus and anticipate range expansion. Range expansion on a weekly chart is a gold mine. As long as you know what the most likely probable direction is on the weekly candle that we're forming right now, you can find setups. You don't have to worry about missing anything because last time I checked, there's every new week, there's a new candle forming on a weekly basis. So there's new setups to form. Now, some weeks are better than others. There's going to be small weeks. There's going to be wick real high, wick real low candles and then creating a small little body. Those weeks can be challenging sometimes, but there's other times when the, when the candle itself is rather small. And you're not going to make money every single week, every single day, every single month. That is not going to happen even with my content because you're going to do something to break the rules or the market is simply not going to do what you hoped it was going to do. But on a large scale probability spectrum, you have more odds of finding opportunities using this criteria than in any other fashion. No other discipline out there gives you this focus point to work within. So now looking at this weekly chart, we're going to look at a bullish candle. Okay, And what we're focusing on primarily is that the open is usually near the low of the week and the close is near the high of the week. Now let's think about this in relative terms. It's a weekly candle, so therefore the open is Sunday's opening. Or if your data is only providing Monday, not Sunday candles, it's going to be the Monday opening. Okay, so what we're looking for is that little bit of movement below the opening price when we're primarily bullish, and then we're going to be looking for expansion throughout the rest of the week until Friday's close. All the way between the open and close, that's your range that you're working within. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do I know how far away the close is going to be? There's calculations and things I'm going to give you to determine what the weekly range may be, and there's going to be things you have to overlap with that in terms of if the data ranges and PD arrays. But between this lesson and what you'll learn in later lessons, just for now, focus on the fundamentals of knowing that there's a large range based on the weekly candle. That range is between the opening on Sunday or your data provider only opening on Monday. That opening price to Friday's close, that's your time window. We're looking for day trades throughout the week, Monday through Friday. We have five opportunities, and if we're going to be fair about it, we generally have basically uh, nine setups that are pretty much solid. We generally don't rush a London setup on Monday, but if you're absolutely aggressive, you can be looking for setups on Monday, especially if you have a big range uh, starting right out of the gate on uh, Sunday going into Monday uh, Frankfurt. So if that happens, then th that's pretty much a, a, a sure deal that you should be paying attention to London on Monday. So you still have to be paying attention to it. So regardless of where you live in the world, around midnight in uh, New York time on Monday, uh, you need to be looking at the charts and see how big the range was for Asia on Monday's trading. So from Sunday's opening all the way into Frankfurt uh, setup, uh, you, you know what that looks like by looking at midnight and uh, Monday morning New York time. And if it's a big range, then you primarily want to look for the weekly high or low to form on Monday because it's in a rush to get somewhere in a hurry. If you look at the daily chart, many times it's going to line up with a premium or a discount array, and then you pretty much know what they're going to probably do the rest of the week. And the same thing in reverse terms, looking at a down candle uh, for the week. We we're looking primarily from the open at the beginning of the week at Sunday. Or again, if you don't have Sunday candles in your platform, we're looking at the opening price on your Monday feed to Friday's close. That's the range you're operating in. So you're looking for shorts in this scenario. Every day, looking for shorts as long as we're below that opening price formed at Sunday or Monday. That filter gives you focus to look for. Now, again, we don't just simply go and look at just because, for instance, Tuesday's London Open uh, may be lower. Okay, it may be lower than Sunday's opening price in Tuesday's London Open. So you, that does not mean simply go in there and start going short because I just said something in, in general terms like that. No, we're going to show you in three examples what can happen and why that isn't always that simple. You have to look at, again, the PD arrays and the PD array matrix. Okay, our first and three 
examples here. We're looking at the daily chart of the pound, and this is illustrating a premium PD array on the daily chart in the form of a daily rejection block, okay, and an old low discount PD array. So we have two reference points framed here, and we're going to look at the week of this recording. Okay, and you can see all of the days for this particular week are noted, and our opening price is forecasted throughout the week until Thursday. Thursday has a delineation, so you can see the uh, separation amongst all the other days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the Friday. You can see that we had that daily rejection block, premium PD array, traded to and above the opening price on Sunday, and price started trading softer right away on Monday, trading lower. Now on Tuesday, okay, we had price sell off right after the transition from Monday into Tuesday. It sold off and then went in consolidation. And that consolidation continued all the way into the London Open for Wednesday. And then price rallied again. Now think about what's happened here on Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, price had traded down into a fair value gap. So we had gap support, and you can see that gap really being noted here on the previous week, but we'll look at that week after this one. But price traded down and found support and couldn't find its way below 124.30 Tuesday and Wednesday. Finally, it rallied up, creating another consolidation. And then Thursday, it trades up intraday, creating a high that's higher than the consolidation that was formed in Wednesday. Then it was rejected, and then we sold off on non-farm payroll on Friday. The general consensus is that we were looking for sales below that opening price on Sunday because it had traded into the daily rejection block PD array in a premium basis. This is the reason why I gave you uh, short objectives of 124.20, 123.75 and then 123.10. 123.10 didn't get traded to, but 123.75 did, and we had a low of the week of 123.65, and that's 10 pips below the low that formed for this old low discount PD array. Okay, our second scenario or example for case study. We have a daily rejection block premium PD array, and we have a bullish order block low discount PD array. Okay, on the previous week, prior to the week of this recording, okay, you can see the opening price on Sunday, and right away, price shoots out the gate on Monday, trades up aggressively, trades higher, and then sells off again in London on Tuesday. And then trades down through that opening price. Now watch what happens. On Wednesday, the, the mantra would be, okay, we're below the selling point of Sunday's opening price. So therefore, I should be looking to sell short because we're below Sunday's opening price. No. The reason why is because we traded down into a fair value gap relative to the daily chart. And we have that daily discount bullish order block. See how it stopped it dead in its tracks? So while we're still below the opening price, and we hit a PD array in a discount contrarian scale. In other words, we're looking at something that would be opposing our expectations on lower pricing. If we're at a discount on the daily, if it hits that, we have to look at what that PD array is. Is it premium or, or, or discount? In this case, it's discount. So therefore, it's going to offer support. We cannot be a seller in this particular setup. We anticipate what unfolding? A reversal. So we have Wednesday's profile, Wednesday reversal or low of the week form. And then we can change gears and forget the Sunday's opening price. And we're going to focus primarily on the weekly profile. And we transition from that. Now we're going to incorporate the weekly profile of Wednesday low of the week. So you can see the low forming at that PD array uh, discount on a daily basis with the order block in London. On Wednesday, it trades down. And then on Thursday, it trades down into that fair value gap. Also, a discount PD array, and then it expands up above the opening price that's seen on Sunday. And then on Friday, 
it opens and trades down again into a bullish order block that was seen on Thursday's trading, and then it expands up against once more, closing in the liquidity void formed on Tuesday's trading. So you can see how it's just simply not watch a video from ICT, and there it is. It's as simple as that. You have to blend some things and look at what would be barriers. What are, what are, what are the barriers or, or uh, speed bumps to you getting to what you think price is going to do? Because we understand if the data ranges, looking back 20, 40, and 60 days, we understand the PD array matrix, what makes a premium array, what makes a discount array, and where we're at in that scheme of the matrix, are we above or below equilibrium? In this case, when price traded down Wednesday into that daily discount bullish order block, you can't just simply say, I'm going to go sell on short because it rallied up in London. It sold off a little bit, but traded down to that bullish order block inside the fair value gap. These are all daily PD arrays in a discount manner. So if it's discount that it's trading at on a daily chart, it's going to resist going lower, but it will paint all kinds of scenarios that would look like sell setups in the retail spectrum. And then all of a sudden you see the market trading higher and it goes up into its respective contrary discount PD array. In this case, it's the Tuesday liquidity void being closed in fair value gap up at the 125.50 level. Okay, our last example here. We have the bullish order block low discount PD array, and we have an old high or equal highs premium PD array. Okay, and we have the opening price on this particular week's Sunday's opening. And price trades right from the opening. It goes up a little bit on Monday and trades down right away into the bullish order block low discount PD array. And then rallies away from that. And then we have one more attempt to go lower on Tuesday. Trades down into it Tuesday and then expands up. So now Tuesday, we've traded above Sunday's opening. We are at a discount on the daily so therefore we have our scenario expecting the weekly range or candle to close higher than it opened on sunday so therefore our mantra is every day we're looking for an open decline low of the day buy it in london in new york we're looking for a retracement into the range that was created from london's low to the high formed prior to 8 20 a.m in that in that realm uh, we're looking for that CME opening, which is 8.20 a.m. New York time. Uh, when that occurs, generally that's going to be the setup in New York. And so usually a uh, continuation, therefore. Uh, and we're going to be looking for an expansion continuing on the up move. So we have the criteria met with a discount PD array on the daily being met on Monday's trading. We trade above Sunday's opening price on Tuesday. So therefore Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking for openings. In London, the trade down, buy it at a logical discount PD array in its lower time frame hourly chart. And look what happens on Friday. The criteria says that Friday can be a quiet day and the weekly range can be capped by Thursday's trading in New York. And you see that happens here. Notice also, because we did not hit the old high or equal high premium PD array, that particular week on the 24th of March. On Sunday, we opened up rallying right away, and it makes a run for what? The daily PD array equal highs. Once it hit those equal highs, then on Tuesday, we see the week that we just talked about. It creates that failure swing around that 125.90 level, creating the high of the week on Tuesday. So there's that overlap of PD arrays that caused the previous examples weekly high the form on Monday and Tuesday. So you have to blend some things, but incorporating the Sunday's opening price and blending it with PD arrays from a discount and premium basis on a daily chart, you can frame out what the weekly range will be. This assists you also with one shot, one kill, but more importantly, it helps us frame whether we're going to be a buyer or seller each day as a day trader and if that condition is really there, if we don't get the uh, open and decline in London that we're looking for to be a buyer and say it just rallies, we don't do anything with it. Or if it trades down later in the day in New York, 
we can be a buyer in New York and then look for that expansion on the upside when we're bullish. So hopefully this has been insightful to you. We're going to build a lot more on this information throughout this month. and give you a lot more details and, and, and processes that you go through. But this is a strong foundation. It helps fill in a lot of gaps from my day trading and, and intraday stuff and Power 3. And especially with the one-shot, one-kill setups that you learned uh, about in the previous month in March. But it's important that it's simply you don't look at the opening price on Sunday and therefore it's above or below. So I'm going to just do that. No, you have to incorporate the PD arrays. And again, this is the reason why it's not just simply watch a video and do it. You have to study. You have to have these things on your chart. Know what they are. Identify them. Label them on your chart. And when it's traded to, you anticipate specific things to unfold. IPTA will move from one PD array to the next, from a discount to a premium, from a premium to a discount. And knowing what they are on a daily chart will help you build and framework for your weekly candle, forecasting it. And if you are trading in the right direction, you only need really one good day of the week. Think about it. If you get 30 to 50 pips in one trading day, that is all you need. But I already know you're going to want to do more than that. But use the rules that's been shown to you thus far this month in this first teaching. And we're going to build on it and our understanding about how we can incorporate all these rules and more rules leading to your complete day trading system. Until next lesson, I wish you good luck and good trading.